Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. And we have quite a bit of news to to share with you folks. Uh, I decided not to do a crack in yesterday simply because, again, it seemed to be just a repeat of what was um, what was occurring uh, relative to uh, to the events going on in the world. And again, I don't necessarily find it to be particularly useful if we just put out an episode for the sake of putting one out, not just for the news, but in general. So anyways, let's jump into it. So first off, the CDC director Walensky has signed off on Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. Injections are, have begun today because I believe he signed off on them, uh, on them yesterday. Excuse me. Again, I'm going to leave that there. You all know where I stand with regards to this. The fact that you can't even have a conversation about the opposite side of this topic is already worrisome to me quite extensively. So the next thing is that the police department in in Minneapolis will not be replaced with a department of public safety. Residents have rejected the proposed amendment. Uh, Again, uh, we see here Minneapolis, of course, you know, with uh, with Antifa, BLM and a handful of other not just them, by the way. The uh, LGBTQ community, uh, you know, uh, even just basic human rights people are saying, you know, should there be a a, a different form of enforcement with respects to officers and should there be, and you know, rightfully so, a lot of arguments could be made in that regard, but personally, I don't think, including African Americans, Asian Americans, you name it, I don't think though that replacing an entire police department with a um, department of public safety per se is something that would necessarily be needed. I think with all the training that goes into the police officers now, I think very simply, you increase funding for maybe the officers to have another six to 12 months training uh, pertaining to, again, mental health issues, things like that. I'm just, again, I'm not on the ground. I'm not pretending like I know exactly what's going on. I'm just going off of, again, all the different things that we see. But there's also propaganda equally as strongly on both sides. So... The next thing is that Republicans seem to take back Virginia and Winsome Sears makes history as the first lieutenant governor woman of color, which is great. I mean, again, for me, it's not about the color of a person's skin. It's about how good are they doing the job, whether male, female. It, to me, it doesn't matter in that regard. But of course, you know, with the with woke and the political wokeness and things like that, again, um, the but again, first time for everything is cool to know. But I'm not going to say, oh, you know, she's the um, the first lieutenant governor woman of color. You know, that's not going to make or break my opinion of her, right? And I apply that to the, lo- the local levels of politics, not just in the U.S., but globally, but even at a higher level, too. The next thing is that General Mark Milley has assessed that it is unlikely China will attempt to retake Taiwan within the next 6, 12, or 24 months. Look, he to, to be consistent, I'm not even trying to shit on him. A lot of people don't like him. I know that. But to be consistent, this is the same general, if I'm not mistaken, you know, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who said that he believes... The Taliban won't take over all of Afghanistan, or if they will, it'll take, you know, many, many months, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but he said something along those lines. Took them like a week, and they got basically the vast majority of the country back. So, you know, um, take that as you will. I'm really not trying to shit on Millie, but at the same time, I'm not trying to prop him up either. The next thing is that Florida's uh, Governor Ron DeSantis created an office dedicated to investigating and prosecuting election crime. Uh, as As he made this announcement, there was a big crowd, and they chanted, let's go, Brandon. Again, if the people of that state want that or they agree with that, they're okay with that. We can also argue very strongly DeSantis is doing this for a vice presidential run with Trump in 2024. Look, if it's marketing gimmicks or tactics or if it's actually intended to be of actual use within the political system, so be it. If this is what the people want, what can you what, what can we argue with, right? And I'm not trying to just say, oh, let, oh well, whatever. But his state, he can do what he wants. Um, The next thing is that the European Union drug regulator EMA renews the, quote, conditional marketing authorization, end quote, of the Pfizer shot for another 12 months. Again, aligned with the UN, aligned with NATO, we're not going to see much um, distancing there, if you will, uh, relative to the United States perspective. The next thing is that the Pentagon warns that China could have a thousand nuclear warheads by 2030, outpacing previous forecasts. I'm not worried, folks. I'm going to be honest. I'm not worried in that regard. I, I Again, I firmly, maybe I'm, this is this is bias in a lot of regards, but I firmly believe that there's not going to be another nuke dropped. And if there is, it, it's going to be extremely minuscule. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to downplay that as, oh, it's just going to be a small one. Only a handful of people will die. No, I just firmly believe at this point in time, as you all know, many of, uh, many of you know, my perspective is open to being changed, that I think extraterrestrials run the show too strongly to let another nuke be dropped. But I, I could be wrong. Um, I hope I'm not wrong in that regard, but, you know, ETs running the show is equally as scary if the ones up there, you know, you know where I'm going to go with that. The next thing is that the fully vaccinated Los Angeles mayor has tested positive for COVID-19 at COP26 in Glasgow and is now isolated alone in his hotel room. 
I'm leaving that there. Uh, the bird flu pre uh, prevention zone declared across the UK. All bird keepers are ordered to follow strict biosecurity measures. We touch on this in an upcoming members episode. Um, as of as a excuse me, as of the time I'm recording this, it's not push part one for those members. It's going to be push part two. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait a day or two for that. But the next thing is that some CNN pundits don't understand the law. Kyle Rittenhouse judge says. I mean, that's a little jab at them, and again, a jab at the propaganda. So, the next thing is that in Georgia, the Fulton County Elections Director Rick Barron is planning to resign at the end of 2021. Barron submitted a letter of resignation today. You, that can, we can swing that either way, and I'm not going to speculate because I would need more detail. So, the, I mean, that does tell us something, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to lean f you folks in one direction or the other. It's not for me to do, at least that's not my belief uh, relative to when I report things. The next thing is that the U.S. has slapped sanctions on the Israeli firm NSO group over the spyware. The Biden administration says the Israeli company spyware enables repression used to target journalists and activists. I'm surprised this happened. It could just be all for show. I mean, we know how tight the Israeli government is with the American government. So again, we know Biden's gone along very strongly with the, um, I guess you could, you could say the Zionist agenda. I mean, that's quite an overarching, vague description. But, you know, Biden's been very vocal about supporting Israel many times, but uh, many uh, instances before not saying that's a bad thing but again i'm just surprised to see this which only makes me think further and further it's just a show it doesn't it's not actually going to mean or do anything but the next thing is that there is uncertainty for syrians in turkey as the opposition warms to assad growing anti-syrian refugee sentiment has led many to question the role uh, the fate of syrians should the akp party be voted out look again folks like i say the people want what the people want. There's only so much you can do in terms of having a social structure that tries to control everybody. Again, we see that in North America. We see that in Europe. We see that, to be honest, even with in Russia with Putin. Like, again, it's all about control, control, control with him. Whether you like him or not, you can't deny that in a lot of regards. If you ask me, at least. I could be wrong, but it's the same idea. He, had, Whenever there's mass protests of 50,000 people or more... Putin, he seems to have issues. Don't kid yourself, right? So again, it doesn't matter how strong, powerful, strategic you are. If you're letting your ego take over the fact of what the people want on a day-to-day -day basis, the everyday person, you, you, you better be ready because you're going to get pushed out of office, if not worse, sadly, but that's the reality. The next thing is that Iran says the U.S. Navy attempted to seize a tanker in the Sea of Oman, but it was foiled. Iranian state TV, uh, TV describes the incident as a failed attempt to steal oil as Tehran prepares for nuclear talks slated for this month. It's possible. It's possible. Covert operation. It wouldn't surprise me. There's hundreds, if not thousands of operations these countries are conducting against each other in every facet. Cyber, military, intelligence, covert ops, you name it. So I don't, I don't rule that out. Again, we would need far more detail to even consider, uh, you know, speculation amongst a handful of possible conclusions there. So, you know, the next thing, and again, what doesn't go reported to are the successful operations the U.S. has, as whether or not that's good or bad for, you know, a, a chain reaction effect relative to the intelligence and military communities, not for me to say, but, you know, we do also don't realize the things that they do, the, the, the successful ones, because when they're successful, no one knows. That's the whole point. The next thing is that there have been deadly clashes in the Democratic Republic of Congo's Bukavu after gunmen launch an overnight raid. Six attackers, two police officers, and a soldier killed during gun battles, local governor says. At least there's authorities to fight back. You know, what bothers me about all this is, again, uh, is the children more than anything. Even the innocent people, like the, just people just trying to go about their lives. And then all of a sudden a village gets raided or something like this happens. It's tough. It's so sad. It's so very sad. Again, you don't think the UN can try and f can fix this problem? Of course, but they need these problems. You create the problem, you create the solution. Something will always come in handy for these jackasses at the top, and this is why they need this stuff. The next thing is that the death, col death toll excuse me, has climbed to 22 in Nigeria building in the Nigerian building collapse. Excuse me. Search and rescue operations enter a third day in Lagos as prospects of finding dozens of missing grow dim. Again, this is, these are unfortunate incidences. I'm not trying to just pass this off as, as you know, that people died. It's very sad. But again, there's not much one can do, blame, or anything like that, right? The next thing is that Ethiopia's war has been marked by extreme brutality from all sides, according to the UN. The UN probe finds evidence of brutal violence that may amount to crimes against humanity, including gang rape by all combatants. You know, again, it, we know the reality of these things. I wish I could offer a simple solution, but it's not that simple as we know, right? The next thing is that the UN has accused uh, uh, car troops of wounding 10 Egyptian peacekeepers. The government denies allegations after a uh, MINUSCA mission says presidential guards opened fired on unarmed unit traveling on a bus marked. 
it's he he says he says she says you know vice versa whatever it's who you're going to believe and were you really on the ground when it happened no so we can speculate that into a million different options and areas this is just a continuing revelation of an intelligence operation whether it's a solidified operation an organized one a centralized one or not that's just my take the next thing is that ethiopia has declared a nationwide state of emergency the move comes after tigrayan fighters said they had captured two strategic towns in the amara region and considered marching on Addis ababa i'm going to be truthfully honest with you folks geographically i don't know specifically where those are so i'm not going to pretend like i do with that being said, again, it's all perception in terms of which side is right and wrong, the beliefs behind the driving forces of this. It's not for me to say either side is right or wrong. But again, the only people that suffer are the innocent ones. It's as simple as that, right? The next thing is that the U.S. has suspended duty-free access to Ethiopia over human rights abuses. Um, the uh, They suspended uh, free access to Ethiopian exports, uh, duty-free access, over gross violations of internationally recognized human rights, um, said a senior U.S. official. Okay. I mean, fair. I'm not even going to say that the U.S. is trying to make a play here. They could be, but fair. Uh, the next thing is that India has ramped up Himalayan border security after clashes with China. New Delhi has deployed cruise missiles, howitzers, choppers, and Israeli-made drones along the treacherous mountain ranges. Th this is Again, I'm not trying to say that, oh, too bad, this is just the way it is. Until the rotten cancer within, the metaphorical cancer within the national security apparatus is lifted, this is what's going to keep going on globally, in my opinion, folks. Again, we take a look, for example, post-World War II, it seems like the goal was to ensure that no major body of power institution takes control over the Eurasian landmass. We see that happening. We see that attempt constantly. That's not, that's not a secret. Not necessarily a conspiracy either. I would say there are conspiracies within conspiracies, conspiracies within factions of different interests and agendas. That's how I would describe it over the many years. But again, not China and India, but just that whole geopolitical landscape, if you will. The next thing is that Ether has hit an all-time high. Ether, the crypto uh, coin, rose to uh, as high as $4,643 a coin in Asian hours, taking uh, the week's gain to more than 10%. Again, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Taliban has, again, people like crypto. Uh, there's that big debate, uh, is it based off of anything or not? But, you know, you could argue it's based off of the value that the people are giving it. Simple as that. But if people say, well, it's not based on gold or backed by land or something, okay, I understand the debate there. The next thing is that the Taliban bans the use of foreign currency across Afghanistan. They say those who continue to trade using foreign currency will face legal action. I go back to my same perspective, which is if you take a nationalistic perspective, technically speaking, it's not our problem. It's true. I mean, and if you take a globalistic perspective, it gets a lot more complicated. So either or, right? Take your pick. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. It's true. Should we, you know, technically speaking, the, you know, North America, uh, the West and so, some European countries, they left. They left Afghanistan. So again, if they left and, you know, there was no success because the military industrial complex guys were skimming off the top. What good is our, our opinion now? You know what I mean? Think about that, right? I could be wrong, but the next thing is that the WHO has granted emergency approval for India's COVAX and COVID jab. The vaccine has 78% efficacy after two doses and, ex and is extremely suitable for low and middle income countries, the WHO said. I'm not even going to touch that. The next thing is that dangerous forever chemicals contaminate U.S. tap water, according to a report. Water consumed by millions contains chemicals linked to cancer, brain damage, and more, according to a new report. Yeah, that doesn't even include the nano nano domestic quell document that we covered on a, a, a very a recent, fairly recent members episode. So you know, take that as you will, folks. Um, I wish I could speculate and comment more publicly, but I can't. The next thing is that Guatemalan police find 54 Haitian migrants in a truck trailer. Migrants were transported to the border with Honduras from where they had entered Guatemala Guatemala illegally. Who was running those migrants? That's what I want to know. Were they forced? Did they want to get into the country in that regard? That's who we got to look into, if you ask me. The next thing is that Ecuador is planning to expand a marine reserve around the legendary Galapagos. Deployed in the fight against climate change, the new protected area is expected to cover about 60,000 square kilometers. Look, I'm not trying to be pro, you know, climate change or pro global warming. I'm not even a tree hugger. I like to see nature preserved. I do. And if they can do this, then so be it. If you ask me, they should have done it, whether there was global warming, quote unquote, issues or not. But... They should have done it either way, if you ask me. I'm a big nature guy, so maybe I'm biased there. The next thing is that several were killed as Belarusian cargo plane crashed in Siberia. Russia's Federal Aviation Agency says the plane circled around after first coming into land, at which point communication was lost. My God, a lot of missing Russian commercial planes lately, huh? I mean, okay, this is a cargo plane, fine, but quite a bit of... Russia's got something going on with their planes. I mean, just a handful of months ago, Putin's uh, emergency presidential plane, I think, um, was, was hijacked or something like that. I mean, or attempted to be hijacked or stuff was stolen from it. 
Man, they got they got. <laughs> you you folks know where I'm going with that. Speaking of which, uh, Putin says that Russian Navy plans to get hypersonic Zircon missiles in 2022. The move is part of a bid by Moscow to forge ahead in a race with the United States. Yeah, th- that's fairly predictable if you ask me. Um, the next thing is that uh, the French envoy has accused Australia of intentional deceit. Canberra says it is time to move on from submarine spat after the French envoy delivers rebuke over a quote stab in the back end quote. Yeah, it's a chess game. Tit for tat. I'm not saying move on, but again, it's a chess game. For, again, France knows their position relative to the other nations, and this is the way it goes. I'm not saying that, again, maybe it could have been prevented, but yeah. Uh, the next thing is that Russia has 90,000 troops near Ukraine border, Kiev says. Ukrainian Defense Ministry says that Moscow has left military units along the frontier after recent training exercises. 90,000 troops is no goddamn joke. I think Putin wants them to know, like, listen, we are right here. I am right here. So take that as you will. The next thing is that EU legislators make historic visit to Taiwan amid China concerns. Yeah, because the EU is in line with NATO, which is in line with the, you know, with the United States, which is in line with the UN and yada yada. And, you know, that's how it's going to go. For me, very simple. I mean, uh, Taiwan's the proxy nation, of, of course, right? Um, but of course, you know, China with the historical, you know, uh, cultural heritage re- with respects to Taiwan, you name it. So again, the next thing is that Singapore says uh, that they em- uh, says embrace crypto or risk being left behind. Uh, the benefits of having a well-regulated local crypto industry could also extend beyond the financial sector, according to the country. They can have an opinion, sure. Uh, the next thing is that China's government has urged families to stock up on stock up on essential supplies in case of emergencies. How convenient, how interesting. Uh, No reason was given for the notice from the Ministry of Commerce, but it came amid ongoing COVID lockdowns and concerns over vegetable supplies after unusually heavy rain damaged crops. Hmm, okay. The next thing is that the boss of oil giant Shell has insisted it can it can transition to net zero by 2050, but it will need the cash from its oil and gas business to pay for it. Okay, so uh, don't even get me started on that, Jesus. Yes, because God forbid, you know, they dip into their their liquid um, liquid reserves and all these other. Th- Don't give me, give me a break. Um, the next thing is that uh, Facebook. Um, oh, sorry, excuse me. The final thing is that Facebook has announced it will no longer use uh, facial recognition software to identify faces in photographs and videos. Uh, they also claim to have been deleting the data of over one billion uh, users' face uh, face data and facial recognition components. There have been growing concerns about the ethics of facial recognition technology with questions raised over privacy, racial bias, and accuracy, end quote. Yeah, but again, they gave it to the NSA, to the CIA first. Do you think they're going to let that stuff go? Come on. The genie's out of the bottle. The genie, in my opinion, and I think I'm being a little bit conservative here, the genie's been out of the bottle in terms of the privacy stuff since at least, and I may be pushing it here, 2010. I would say maybe even 2006 or 7, maybe even earlier if they really wanted to with respects to, you know, getting hacking and, and, and things like that. But I'd say, in my humble opinion, 2010 was the year when it was like, okay, they, they, the genie's out of the bottle. Looking back at things now, doesn't surprise me. Doesn't look at the, the transition of the evolutionary events relative to what occurred in Silicon Valley in 2010. Steve Jobs, the moves they made and things like that. So, you know, with that being said, folks, that's it for today. Uh, we will see based on the news again, if there will be another crack in tomorrow, if not, then we will definitely do one on Friday. It's just, you know, if it's a slow news week, uh, I'm, I don't want to make episodes just for the sake of making them. So with that being said, folks, thank you so very much for watching or listening and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.